Hello, people. Welcome to another edition of the TOD Show. I am Oduola Abayomi, your host, and I have on set with me today one of the big Rotarians in Nigeria. I have on set with me Adewale Abdul. Welcome, um, Rotarian Adewale Abdul. Can we meet you, sir? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is um, Rotarian Adewale Aziz Abdul. Um, I'm a risk analyst, and um, I'm the brain behind Waste Foods World. Mm -hmm. uh, registered business in Nigeria. We've been in existence for the past 10 years. Tw July 2012, precisely. Uh, started as a side hustle and uh, eventually taken to be one of the brands to be reckoned with in Lagos, Nigeria, precisely. Wow, that's very nice. What's the vision behind Wheels Food Fair? Okay, um, there's so much passion with uh, shoes as far as, um, as far back as that 2012. And, um, I, of course, realized that a lot of people cannot actually afford the kind of shoes they would love to wear. Mm. And um, this idea of dollar exchange rates and all that has always been an issue. And um, we decided to say, okay, we have the largest uh, producing, uh, leather producing uh, state in Africa, not just in Nigeria, in Kano. Mm. And we have leathers all around. So why can't you just do something within Nigeria? something that can be reckoned with, something that has quality, something that can be referred to as unmade in promoting local content in Nigeria. So we started uh, in the streets of Shomolu, wow. Bariga, Surulere precisely, uh, at the larger end, and um, we were able to do some, you know, wonders with leathers. Wow. Okay, so um, food prayers, when it comes to food prayer, you, you source locally for all your materials, right? Yes, please. How is the process like? Is it a very tedious one or just smooth? Uh, it has not been smooth. It's a very challenging journey. Uh, bearing in mind that um, there are a lot of companies that produce uh, leather that have folded up in Nigeria. Uh, it could be infrastructure issues. It could be economic, um, you know, or even government mm. uh, regulations and the like. Politics. So a lot of them are actually out of business. And um, we have a very, very local source there okay, in Moshin, Lagos, oh, precisely. Okay. So when you get there, you'll be marveled at what you see. We cannot go all the way at every production to Kano, Kano, for instance. So we have some people that move it around the whole of Nigeria. And we get good leaders. Very good leaders. You know, your money determines the quality of what you're getting. So sometimes uh, the same production may take a different sense of equality of the leathers we are using. So it has not been smooth, but then I think uh, in the last five years, we had some kind of stability. Okay, so personally, I have interest in leather because I love leather, animal skin and the likes. Is there any way that um, you can actually, as a consumer, is there any way I can determine the quality or the grade of leather? Yeah, sure. Um, even at the point of um, marketing, when you display some shoes and they say, okay, this will go for 30,000 Naira, used to go for 20,000 Naira. With the cost, the magnitude of the cost, you could tell Chelsea, the kind of quality. The quality. Yes, so if you want a shoe of 15,000, you can get it. Wow. If you want a shoe of 10,000, you can get it. You can also get a shoe of 40,000. So the quality also determines And then the other the accessories price. that you'll be using, the yes. sole, yes. and then I think buckles. The buckles, the, the tassel. You know, you still have to play around with the accessories. And of course, there are cheap, Poor quality accessories, accessories, and they are also very top notch. Okay, so so far, how has the journey been like, sir? Ah, well, um, there's this book I read sometimes that talks about um, you feeling fast, mm -hmm. you feeling forward, which is most important. Uh, the business almost died in uh, about three years after. Oh. That was about 2015. There about. Uh, you know now, families and friends will say, okay, yeah, sell this for me, and uh, I'll see you at the end of the month, I'll pay you. And of course, you want to do business. You wouldn't mind, probably because of the trust reposed on those people or your relationship. And as such, people buy and find it difficult to pay, to pay, back. To pay back. So that is one of the issues. You have to be rest assured that you don't just look at the profit. You ensure that you want to break even especially ensuring your capital is intact at the end of the day. So um, to a large extent, we got discouraged in between. Uh, Nigerians not trusting locally made 
uh, materials. Nigerians not trusting a brand that is not known in the public. Nigerians not even respecting the kind of quality of leathers that can be produced here in Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria. So everybody's looking at Italian products. Everybody's looking at the one from uh, Paris. Everyone is waiting for the French shoes and the likes. So you have to do quite a lot mm. to get the attention, one. You have to do a lot to benchmark your products with those because um, some before now we used to assume that um, your quality is as determined by you the producer that is not the case in 21st century quality is determined by the consumers quality is determined by who is buying so when you request for issue of um, say 25,000 naira, and um, i deliver after a while and what you want to do as a consumer is to compare my handmade shoe with an Italian product, a foreign, a product. foreign product. So you want to compare a shoe, a pair of shoes that you bought for for five thousand naira, with what you are buying here for twenty thousand naira. Bearing in mind that they have the sophisticated machines required in the production, and you using your handmade, handmade your scissors, your gum, the filing machine that is still manual and the like. So. At some point, you want to say, oh, this is not a fair comparison. But sure. that is not the customer's perspective. So you need to reach out and present something that you know can actually benchmark and stand the test of time in terms of quality, in terms of finesse, in terms of finishing, in terms of, you know, by all standards as a customer would want to assume. So in your industry, sir, between um 10 years ago let's say 10 years ago and now have you seen any improvements in shoemaking in nigeria yes yes quite a lot quite a lot and this uh, i would say uh far back as 2017 we started realizing as nigerians that instead of you uh pushing down pushing up your uh, um ad end funds abroad to import shoes mm. you can actually get some very good shoes here in nigeria yeah, yeah. and you spend less and you still get the quality that you actually want. So I would say immediately after the COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. say 2020, 2020. 2020. So we experienced that most people now have some level of trust in Nigeria made, in Nigeria products. made products, shoes precisely. And um, the aspect of the exchange rate has also forced some people to yeah. you know, come to Nigeria people and say, okay, dollars now prefer to they now prefer, Naira. exactly. So you want to do the comparison you look at the exchange rate, you look at the stress involved in even shipping your products from abroad and, okay, let's give it a try. Let's see how it goes and we'll do one. Of course, we learn in the process. Mm. We have a lot of rejections. We have a lot of, you know, destructions of your right in your presence. A customer can say, is this a shoe or what do you call this? And they start pulling it. Uh. And you don't want to get the press and say, okay, you still say sorry and you find a way to improve, to improve. And satisfy the of course so that is learning in the post in the process excuse me so when you learn in the process you tend to be better at it because you do it almost every time so consistency i would say has uh, given us that edge and uh, we're not there yet and uh, we're just making efforts to get to that level but of course we are much better than where you to, were before. Yes, okay much so better. Sir, what do you see the shoe industry in nigeria in the nearest future mm. Like in the future, what do you see this industry? I, I feel to a large extent, the the optimism is high. Uh, even neighboring African countries now come to Nigeria to come and get our leaders. Wow. And um, I can say authoritatively from start that African countries still look up to Kano here in Nigeria mm. to get their quality leaders. And um, I feel uh, the, uh, what they call it, now the encouragement from government, I think is much better now. Uh, we now have uh, this ease of doing business in Nigeria that has given most people that confidence to say that I can actually put fund into this. I can actually invest, invest into this, in get people that are on ground, apply the skills and scale it. Wow. So I think, um, we are going further than we can imagine. And you're very optimistic about this. Very world. optimistic. At least I have uh, my products uh, going out of the country now. Wow. We now, we have um, some loyal customers 
in Nairobi, Kenya. We have in South Africa. We have a few in uh, Canada and US okay. that would say, okay, so so person is coming. I want to select this product, can they make the production and get it delivered at a time. And when they get there, they do videos. I mean, most of our customers now are true referrers. Mm -hmm. And that is usually the best way of actually getting more customers. So the loyalty um, uh, game is, you know, getting up there as we wish. Okay, so one last question before we go on a break. Have you been able to leverage on social media for your business? Thank you. Uh, so far, I do not have uh, a physical showroom oh. for my products. And um, social media, for me, is one of the best things that has happened to my business. Wow. Uh, what we do is get the products, get the specification for customers. I still do a whole lot of um, pay before delivery. Okay. So customers or, or potential make customers an make an order, make payment, give me that specification. We go ahead for the production. We give them a time frame. 15 working days, 10 working days. Depending on the style Depending of on, shoe. God bless you. The design and the kind of leather would okay. also determine. Because some we don't have to, after piling, you still need to leave it for a while to steam up before you go into the, the final production. Oh, okay, so there's a time brace for leather work as yes, well. Yes, oh, okay. yes. So if you rush into it, you will eventually have a product that does not meet the standard. The standard. So when you are doing your, your quality check, you want to be sure that it meets the standard, at least at the pace of what you want to produce. Wow, that's interesting. So social media on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, we share our products and we get feedbacks, we get comments, we people reach out to us what's based your on what so um wait for twelve underscore okay wheels underscore wait for twelve sorry Wales that's for the wheels underscore wait for twelve um okay. under foot okay, okay. wheels underscore foot for instagram on facebook is wait for twelve nigeria oh okay and um on twitter the same thing at wait for twelve 2014. Oh, okay. so we have days and that uh, we can always reach out to a customer we have the website for our products. Oh, you have a website? Yes, I have a website. So people can add to cards, yes, shop, and yes, pay you can, smoothly. Yes, yeah, smoothly. That's it's an e-commerce site. Okay. So you can reach out there, um, pick an item, or make a selection, or make a specification, because we also do uh, customized shoes. Mm. We produce shoes for kings, for chiefs, and um, you want your name to be written, oh, you want your okay. title to be written on your shoes. Or just a letter. If or just a letter. letter or, so we customize shoes. We build it, we get specification. We do as much as uh, building sites 48, 49 wow. for the big foods. For big foods? Yes. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, so we need to go on a quick break and then we'll be right back to discuss further with Adewale Aziz about the shoe industry in Nigeria. Thanks on the break. We're discussing about your business, the shoe industry, and all of that. So, okay, let's just feel a bit more relaxed now. We would like to know some personal things about you, what the general public don't know, what some of your customers don't even know about you, like. Okay. You know, your hobbies, what you do at your leisure time and all of okay. that. All right. Um, thank you. Um, I'm a Rotarian. Okay. Um, a past president of Rotary Club of Yaba Court View. Wow. Uh, District 9110, Nigeria. And um, I like serving humanity. Hmm. I like uh, putting smiles on people's face. I like doing things that will make other people happy. Hmm. That is one of the reasons why I joined Rotary. And uh, currently, I am the Assistant District Secretary of Rotary This is 910 Lagos, Nigeria. And um, I like football. I'm oh. a social thinker. I like discussing politics objectively. You actually look like a politician. <laughs> I am not one. <laughs> and um, sports, yes. Uh, I like wrestling too. Mm. I like catching fun, movies, things just to give me peace, happiness. So you're not the workaholic no, kind no, of no, person. No, no, I, I'm, Try a, to I'm balance. a social animal. Try to balance. Yeah, balance it. And you walk and of course you play. And um, I'm a free person. I like going to parties. Mm. I anchor events, like oh, I do okay. MC. Oh. Wedding receptions, conferences, investiture, anything. So I handle microphone a lot. Nice. So it's either I'm working in the workshop or I'm on stage. Wow. Uh, doing what I like to do. So beyond being paid, it's also part of my hobby. I like talking. 
Okay, so you are in Rotary, right? Yes. So it means, um, like you said, you like doing stops for humanity. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us one or two things about some of your projects that you have actually done in your community? Okay. Um, yes, um, during my tenure as the president of Rotary Club of Yaba Courtville, there was um, a school around us in Yaba, uh, Burial Senior Avenue Secondary School. Uh, we noticed that um, the school as an open heaven, mm. like a two-story building, no pan, no ceiling. So when rain falls, when sun shines so bright, it gets directly on the students. On the students. And um, of course, as part of what we do is to put funds together, generate money amongst ourselves, and think of what to do. So we actually renovated that building wow. into a shape that is, you know, will be um, appreciated by anyone. Uh, did the ceiling, did the pan, provided windows for all the classes, wow. about 32 classrooms. Wow, that's and, a lot. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. And uh, was a star project for the year. Uh, painted the whole building and made provisions for benches and all that. And, um, you know, there are also other less privileged homes around. There is a particular one called the Magnificent Therapy Home around Saboyaba. For, that's for homes for children with um, disabilities. So we visit often, making provision for uh, food items, uh, toiletries, and all sorts of household items. Then there is a community in Sabo Yaba called the Makoko community. Makoko, yeah. Yes, that's a place where you know there is, not, there is no amount of um, items to take there that will be enough. Mm. So you have to go there often to make people happy. We still did one recently, uh, prior to Christmas, just to make people happy. Wow. And a couple of others that we cannot so mention. So Rotary Club is not just about hanging out, taking pictures. They actually do mm -hmm. stuff for their community. Yes. The essence of that. Rotary is to actually serve humanity, making people happy. The fun part is just to, uh, you know, give out and be happy with it. Like when you're happy doing something, we have to have a part of it, not just giving out, but something we'll call like um, a cheerful giver. Be happy with what you do. So basic uh, rules of um, any Rotary Club is to actually help your immediate community. Of course, you need to do a need assessment. What do they need in this environment? Is it water? Is it, um, do they need food? Is it clothing materials? Or shelter. Or shelter. So there are seven areas of focus. There are some that are, there is a particular one that has to do with basic education and literacy. Interesting. There is a particular segment that talks about uh, community development, like empowering people, okay. market women that need money, like 50K, 100,000, 200,000, to start a business and, of course, they'll be better at it. We do that. Is it about um, uh, community health? We do one every year, in every October, where we come to a particular location get a base, provide them with um, um, some drugs. They do medical tests, all forms of medical tests for free. Wow. And um, they get drugs. Some that need referral will be referred. We do surgery for free. The one that needs to be traveled abroad, all for free, handled by Rotary, by individuals that put their funds wow. together. So is it Rotary Club people. in your zone, or is it like that nationally? That is, Rotary is a global organization. Okay. It's Rotary International. And uh, there are districts all over the world. Okay. So the one I fall under is Rotary District 9110. 9110 covers both Lagos and Ogun State. Oh, so there okay. are clubs in various communities that form that district. Then the district also forms the global community. Wow. So uh, Rotary is about uh, two, over 2.5 million uh, people all over the world. So, members. Yes, members all over the world, anywhere you are. Wow, so there is always a Rotary Club is in any location. So joining it, is it like you have to pay? Yes. Or you have to meet a certain criteria? Uh, of course, you must have uh, something that fetch you fund, like where you do, you, you have um, a place where you get fund from, like a paid job or a business, legal business. A legal, a legal source business. of income. Income has to be there. Then you have to be willing to actually serve your humanity. Mm, okay. You want to serve your community. So, of course, before you join, a, a set of assessments will be done on you to be sure that 
you actually meet the ethical standard of Rochi International. Wow. So once you do that, you associate yourself with a club in your community and uh, tell them, I want to join. You can actually Google club in any community. They will tell you there's a Rochi club in Soso place. There's a, a, another club in. So you pick one that is either closer Close to your to home or your office, office or your business location, depending. And of course, there's an annual deal oh. which forms part of what we put together to do stuff to so execute all these projects. All these projects, yes. So every year there's a new president. You cannot start more than a year, oh, and you okay. must have your set of projects that you want to do for that year. As a president. As a as a president as a club. Okay, so when you were the president, the school renovation and all of that mm -hmm. was your own. Was yes, project. was part of my project for that year. Oh, that wow. was in 2019, 2020. Now it's interesting to know all of this actually. Okay, so back to. What we we're discussing earlier running a brand in nigeria we all mm -hmm. know that it's not easy and not just in nigeria anywhere in the world running yeah, sure. your business can never be easy so what is the major challenge that you actually face as a business owner mm. well uh, nigeria is a peculiar country <laughs> very peculiar uh what you take here is not the same as what you see in other countries, countries. and uh, this is lagos you just have to keep pushing Challenges will come, but how you handle it matters most. You want the business to die or you want to sustain it. Uh, like I said, there was a time we actually failed and uh, we didn't do anything for like a year, close to a year, until my mentor just, what are you doing? What other things do you do apart from being a risk analyst? Don't you have a side hustle? And I said, yes, I started one in 2012. And it was like, so what's up? And I started all the challenges of Lagos, people in Lagos, and he said, well, you only find an excuse for what you don't want to get done. Mm, true. You find a way for what you feel yeah, you want yeah. to achieve. So I picked it up again and um, we got better at it. So challenges will come. We've mentioned some earlier regarding uh, government uh, regulations, um, policies. policies, yes. Uh, others with, um, um, you know, you have to target your audience. When I was doing that then, I didn't actually segment my audience. You were not targeting I was the not, right yeah, audience. Yeah, the right well. audience. So um, are we looking at uh, low income earners? Are we looking at middle income earners? Are we looking at um, high income earners? That's one. Another thing is, um, are we looking at corporate individuals or in a proper business person? Am I doing males only or am I doing females? Am I doing children? So I started with everything. Then at some mm. point, I had to limit to uh, males, adults, because that is where the market is after sampling, you know, the range. Then um, at some point, uh, people started asking for foreign shoes. Okay, yes, we like this, that, but then don't you have sneakers? Can't you get sneakers from Nike? Do you have this product? Do you have air? Do you have Adidas? How are you able to manage so, that uh, Far back as, um, 2019, I had to go into importation of sneakers okay. for both male and female. Okay. So we started that and uh, we were able to break into some markets that we were not, uh, you know, serving before there. So diversification is allowed, flexibility is also, so we have to just be dynamic to meet um, your, your customers' needs. Wow, and that's, what that's interesting. Do. Like you had to diversify by bringing in sneakers. Sneakers, yeah, foreign sneakers. And it didn't create any sort of competition for your own. Sneakers. No, no. People that will go for your real leather will still do your real leather, and people, people that wanted sneakers. So will still go a, a a a family of um, four can order um, three pairs of shoes, locally made leathers, and say, okay, please, I also want sneakers for my kids. Oh. Oh, okay, and then they just add they that. They just add that, and um, we had your margin, and you move on. Okay, um, so before we actually wrap up the show, you mentioned something earlier about diversification. Okay. Okay, so can you make can you give us more insights about it? Something that is applicable to other businesses as well, aside from shoemaking. Okay, um, in business, you don't come out rigid. Mm. You don't come out fixed like this is what I want to do. Your mindset has to be dynamic enough to be able to understand your market. You must be able to understand or even preempt your consumers. When they make a requisition for something that you don't have, you need to start looking at the possibility 
of even you know doing other things that were not in your plans mm. if there is need so every business person is supposed to be dynamic in their thinking and of course as you well. have to be proactive you have to be thinking uh in the course of doing business other things may crop up and you just have to find a way to be able to adapt to those needs so like i said we learn through the process we learn by doing and learning by doing would make you see a wide range of other opportunities mm. so you don't close your eyes to opportunities mm. i'm a risk person as in the 21st century you don't just look at risk the negative part of everything as you are looking at the negative part of some things you also have to consider the possibility of opportunities in those risk identified so as you are doing business somehow somewhat you are doing some level of market evaluation analysis, analysis in between is this is not working well what how else can i tweak it what best can i do if this person wants it, that means there are still other 10 people or 100 people that also want the same why who say i cannot do this mm. into what i'm doing so but of course you know your focus so that standard set by yourself can always be reviewed so from time to time you must review where you are going the same way you have strategies and if the strategy is not working well there is need for you to go back to drawing board and, and strategize do you get it okay thank you very much you've actually done justice to that question so <laughs> wrapping up the show so what advice do you have to give to upcoming um, entrepreneurs like people that want to start this business what advice do you have to give to them because you you have um, like 10 years experience yes. so far so what, what okay like um to i'm a baby in the business no you're not <laughs> <laughs> you're not a baby so um i would just say you do not need to uh procrastinate when you want to start a business hmm, procrastination. don't say that uh, okay i'll start next year or i'll do that I'm not ready for this now. Of course, you have to be ready. Uh, passion is not enough. Passion is good mm. to start a business. Passion is not enough. It will not take you beyond that level. And um, when you start with that passion, yes, it gives you an edge to be able to do something. But on the long run, you really need to understand the tenets of that business. You must go nitty gritty. You must be able to understand uh, what are the hidden traps in that business. You don't just double into a business. You do your research. Uh, you start with your circle of influence first. Mm. Who do you know? Who are your friends? I have um, as many WhatsApp groups as possible. Do they know you in those WhatsApp groups? Mm. Do they know you for what you do? Do you actually advertise to the extent that they know that if I need a pair of shoes today, this is the person to call? Sometimes you don't wait to say, okay, I'm doing this business at this moment and uh, I expect it to just peak it has to be gradual it has you have to be consistent you need to be known for what you stand for you sell shoes and uh, friends or colleagues don't even know that you do hmm. then who are you reaching out to if those closer to you are not even aware of what to do so your circle of influence is very key who are your friends who are your associates your network your network is indeed because that is where you're going to start from. People that don't trust your brand or don't know you would, would may not buy from you. When you're just starting. When you're just starting. So you start with people that are closer to you. Then at the same time, you don't stop that business because definitely you are going to encounter some level of challenges in the business. So you don't let them outweigh you. You learn by those challenges. And um, whenever you fall, you have to rise above the level you were before you fail hmm. so that way you keep pushing you make some sacrifices there are times you are going to make losses and there are times that you're just going to boom like make profits beyond your expectations. that is it so when you make those losses it's part of the business you don't prepare a business proposal and for the first three years you're already counting profit 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 it's not going to last when you start the business, there are tendencies, depending on the kind of business, there are tendencies that you are going to make some losses at inception. Then over time, you'll be able to scale up that business to be better at it. So people do not want to make um, those sacrifices again. Everybody wants sharp money. It doesn't mm. come that fast. They're not doing your own now. 
It doesn't come that fast. You have to do some level of hard work. Very, very key. The hard work would have to start the job for you. And your consistency with it, your tenacity in that business would actually tell you how far or fast you want to go. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. You've done Thank justice you. today. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you on the show. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay, guys, it's a wrap today on the TOD show, and um, it's an awesome interview with Adewale Aziz. And the take home for me personally is that in any business that you want to do, do not procrastinate. And you should also know that passion is not enough. You need to do beyond that and leverage on your circle of influence and also consistency. Thank you very much for staying tuned to watch the TOD show. I remain your host, Abayomi Odonla. Join me next time on the same channel. Thank you. Hello people, welcome to another edition of the TOD show. I am Odola Abayomi and I have on set today with me one of the best hands in forest trading in Africa. I mean, he's one of the best trainers that we actually have around in Nigeria. I have on set with me today, Ifai Uche. Hello Mr. Ifai, it's nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Um, Can we meet you sir? Yeah, I'm Ifai Uche as you've mentioned already. A forex trader, a coach, a mentor, an educator. Wow. And what else? That's who I am. Okay, so sir, so why did you choose this career path? Why forex? Why not something else? Why not banking? Why not agriculture? Why forex? Though I've done a little bit of agriculture, but oh, then I, I thought as uh, much. But then uh, talk of forex trading back in two thousand and six. Uh, there was this frenzy, you know, thinking talk about making money from the internet, mm. and so we all dabbled into whatever we saw. And there was this program then called HYIP. Um, my mentor, the late Dr. Jaguars, he called it heightening your inevitable penny rate. But then it was it meant it actually acronym for high yield investment program. So we all went into it thinking that's the best way to make money from the internet. But then, so I eventually it got to a point. Because I was in Abekuta then, okay. uh, after my service, I uh, stayed back there and had contacts uh, with people in government and all that. So I, I had a manager in Midway Assurances then, who I was I was also offering services to. So I told him I wanted to ensure that program. But the day he sent me a feedback that the board had sat on that program and found out that they were not handy, it was the same day that the program closed. Mm. So we couldn't access it again. So I lost so much money. So coming back to Lagos, at, I was at one of the seminars organized by Success Attitude Development Center, SABC, at Eshola, Okota. So I met somebody, Tim. So we were just talking and he said, if you could risk so much, how about checking out Forex trading? And by then, Forex trading was literally new to Nigeria. Very few people were trading. So and that was when the interest picked. So I began to search for how to get into it. I remember calling up somebody. Emmanuel, I saw the advert on one of the newspapers. He said he would train me for four hours for how much? 50k. At that time, yes. 50,000 was a lot of money. I said, do you, do you mean I will learn it in four hours? He said, why not? Sure. Of course, I had to run because I knew it wasn't possible. So then I said this organized the first money in the bank uh, workshop for intelligent investors in January, February of 2007. And Forex was one of the courses they offered. Mm -hmm. So I enrolled and we were about 52 of us in the class. It was a five day course. And in 2007, as I speak, uh, you know, as I'm talking about it, 2007, the seminars that people were organizing on Forex were Saturday seminars, weekend, one day, and 25,000 naira to pay for such seminars. And anybody that knows anything about Forex, the market does not open on Saturdays. Market opens on late, on Sunday, late night on Sunday, and closes late night on Friday. So organize a seminar on Forex on Saturday, what are people coming to learn, theory. But then here was the program that was for five days. But then for five days we spent, and he taught us what he knew, because you can't give out what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And for those five days, really, we never saw a trade placed, even on a demo account. But then we're excited about 
ah, there's so much money in the forest market, it's a gold mine. Some of us sold our, proper, our businesses, some sold their properties, some sold their cars. To start. To start. I sold what was left of the remains of my business in Abekuta to go put into forex trading. And then interestingly, by the time I went back over the weekend after the Saturday program, it was a whole week. By Monday, I was, Sunday I had set up my trading platform, the MT4. So by Monday, I was in the office in front of my computer. I wanted to now start making the money. Well, I've not put any money yet, but to now try what we were taught. While I was, you know, trying, trying, all of a sudden I saw tears straining down my eyes. Mm. As in, my eyes were full of, it was so teary, I was like, could it be I've wasted a whole week? Because I couldn't understand Jack on the platform. We bought the, I also bought the video pack that he sold to us. I slotted it in, I couldn't understand anything. I'm like, what? Well, at that point I knew that there was trouble. So I had after to, five days. After five days. <laughs> so I had to start all over. And eventually I understood the plan. This was just to understand how the platform worked. Because we couldn't play, we didn't play security during the period. But there so, was no um uh, we, 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 there was no practical, so we were just every day we talk, 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 tell you ah the beautiful things about forest Of course, the excitement, the frenzy. Everything. So those were all we lived on, thinking that was the way it was. And eventually, I got to understand, like my colleagues too, we were fifty-two of us in that class then. So when I started, after demo training for a few weeks, I had to now pack up work of the this one I had remaining and funded my life trading account. Two weeks after. I don't forget Easter of 2007 in the hurry because it was on that Easter Friday weekend that I blew up the account. Just the Thursday before the Easter period, Easter weekend that the whole money I put in the account evaporated. Oh. That was his first experience. So I had to go back to learning, started digging out things. That was on your own. On my own. Now on my own. Now. So I more like became a self taught trader. Because I, everything I learned was what I sought you know, for myself and gathered. Eventually, I, I stumbled on babypeeps.com. Babypeeps is still there in existence. I stumbled, stumbled on uh, Forex, um, that um, Fibonacci book.com, owned by Jeff Boyd. And in fact, I had started interacting with him. I'm sure he's still alive, but the site is still there. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so he's a website people. to train? Yeah, yeah, no, no, he, I was just learning, picking the lessons there. Okay. To, I learned how to come and try it every evening, whatever I, I, I experience in the day, I'll come and send you an email, he will reply me. So that was just how it ran eventually. But then after that, by June, toward the end of June, I had one, okay, I was learning. One day I stumbled on a, a, a lady online too, who was selling a trading system. And the story he told her that he blew his account from $5,000 to $50, uh, $250. So that he will, eventually he had to create a system that helped her to, she had to create something that took her from two fifty to $50,000. I'm like, whoa, I found it. So I wanted a system, but he said it was $100, and I didn't have $100 then. So what do I do? I remember I had other colleagues who were also struggling. All of us were struggling, all of us. No, 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 yes, no exception. The two of us were struggling. So I sent, the, an email, sent out an email that, hey, I found a trading system that could help us because we all thought it was a trading system. The key to success in forest trading was there's a holy grail trading system you need to have. So I sent out the the system the email to them. Please, I needed only ten people to bring ten ten dollars. E gold in those days was uh, the means of uh, e currency exchange. Please send me ten dollars if you are interested. Once I get ten people, I'll buy the system. Okay, so ten people that will be hundred dollars. Yes. So they actually sent the money. They sent the ten dollars. Before I wanted, when I wanted to pay, I'm like, come on, this fellow that created this, how many heads does she have? One. Me eco one head then let me also see if i could create a system i i stopped i didn't buy again i went back to baby peeps and there's a guide in babypeeps.com on how to create a trading system so i followed that guide and created my very first trading system wow. so when i finished i, I demonstrated it it was profitable so i told them sorry i didn't buy again i've created one if you're interested i will send you your money back or if you want the system, I'll keep your ten dollars and send you send the system. You. Literally, all of them said I should send them the system, so I sent them. So I made hundred dollars. Wow! Instead of paying the lady. Uh, exactly. So then I it was after that I then sat down and thought, wait, wait, you know the advert in those days is forex is a gold mine. You see, on Guardian newspaper, center spread adverts, full page adverts on forex gold mine for a Saturday seminar twenty five thousand. 
anybody that bears it, if you dig out paper as of those days, that's what you see. So I'm like, okay, I think there's a truth that needs to be told, my experience. So I put some money, paid this for a small spot. In the newspaper. In the newspaper. Free Forex trading seminar. Nobody had ever done it by before that time. Wow. Free Forex seminar. Come on Saturday. It was two Saturdays. The last Saturday in, in June and the first Saturday in July. So I had over 60 people that came. And the first thing I told them was <sighs> I blew my account in the first two weeks. How many of you are still ready to pay for it? You can also blow yours. If you are not interested, better leave. And trust me, all of them stayed. So I told them, shared my experiences to them, how what they are reading in the newspapers and the adverts are not absolutely true because the market is not open. Why are you here on Saturday to learn forex trading? What you hear from me is just the theoretical aspects. Okay, so why why uh, would that be called training? It's more like a sensitization. So and that was what I did that day. So I call them up. If you are interested, let us learn together. One month. We'll be coming on weekdays, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. And that was when people paid me money. So the one month was a paid session. Yes. Because I read it somewhere about your profile that you're the first person ever in Nigeria to organize it. Free uh, anybody can go and check. In 2007, nobody did free forex seminar before July of 2007. Nobody That's did. So thoughtful of Nobody you. did. So uh, it was just like, let me share this experience because I'm like, because people started calling me. I remember they were calling saying, I want to sell my shop to Pudu. I said, please don't try it, madam, <laughs> because I I already had the experience. You were in that uh, yes, I was there. So that was how it all started. I, I, so part of the system I created, and one guy, Charles Marcel, I will call him out because if he's still in, around, he, 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 he came over to Computer Village then because that was where I was using. Uh, with a friend. So he came over and said he wanted the system. I told him 10,000. He pleaded with me for 575. I gave it to him. And that was the last I used that system. Mm. I went on to create other systems because all we knew was system is the way to success in forest trading. Okay, so sir, please, can you give us a deep insight on, into this system? Like, what does it mean? It's just, like trading, it's just like trading strategies that come with rules. It's just like system that, a, 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 a strategy that will tell you, okay, this is when to buy. This is when to sell, this is when to take profit, this is when to cut your loss, this is when to come out. So that's what you call system that's in what's forex called, trading. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it gives you signs, you check out if those signs are in place, it's time to either buy or sell or exit. So it's like a guide. A guide, yes. Oh, okay. All right, so, so um sad. 20, 2007 to now, that's 15 years. So you've been in the forex industry for 15 years. What do you have to say about the growth between then and now? Is there any any improvement about that in Nigeria concerning forest trading in Nigeria, can you see any impact or improvement between 2007 to 2022? Of course, there is plenty of them. What first notable uh, improvement you notice is that back in 2007, if you want to trade forex, you have to wait for days after you have created an account with a broker, and then you have to wire your money to the broker and wait until the broker says you have received it, and then credit your account. Uh, before you start trading so it takes days it, it, had to, it took days for, for it to happen when you want to make withdrawal too you place your withdrawal order it had to take days for the money to come to you then you receive it but today if i want to fund an account right now in an hour it's done maximum 24 hours is done if i want to make withdrawal within the wow. same time frame you've got your money and secondly in 2009 because i started because part of that story 2007 uh, along the line, I began to generate trading signals because that part of the story, if there's time, I will tell it. But when I started tr generating trading signals, uh, you know, I was a student learning. And one day I watched the teacher generate his signals. I generated the same signal. The following day I traded it, I made profits. He made a loss because every evening you come and report the results. And you use the same signal? The, yes. He, he created, he, he set it up. Me, I set up my own too. And I made more, I made profits. He recorded a loss. So, I'm like, so that means I too can do it. So, that was when I paused and then started creating mine. And then, first week of October, because every month, the first week of every month is usually a very big day. On the first Friday of every month, so a big day in the forest uh, market industry. Okay. Uh, there's the reports that come out from US, uh, the non farm payroll, the unemployment uh, uh, reports. 
they are, they, are, they are big movers in the market. In fact, there are people that will just wait for that day. So uh, that weekend, uh, that week, I created the trading signal for that week. It's a news, ev news event signal. So I sent it out to my email list. You remember, okay. I, had, I had people already that come in June, July. So that October, yeah, that October, I sent out the list, the signal to them. And by the evening of Friday, my email started buzzing. Mm. Thank you for the signal. Thank you for the signal. One particular one said, I regret that I didn't use the signal on my live account. Others that used it were like, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And it was free. They made money. Yes, they made money with it. So I'm like, really? So immediately I forwarded the feedback to my mentor, Dr. Jabwasi, the publisher of uh, Sustain Digest. He's late now. He passed on early this year, February this year. So he was a forex trader. No, not a forex trader. The publisher of Complete Sports. Okay. Also, the publisher of uh, Success Digest uh, uh, newspaper. Uh, his, his platform, it was his platform that we learned. We learned the first forex trading oh, and okay. he created that platform to build entrepreneurs. Most of us have passed through uh, that. A lot of people you know so today. Ready. Yeah, but so tomorrow is his birthday, so it could be a pre-starting birthday, thirty-first of November. Okay, so I sent an email to him that see, sir, see what because when we were going through the struggle, he was away and he called up help for us. John Ademo used to work in that office, uh, Success Digest, and he called him because he was also doing something about Forex. He was one that actually introduced me to that guy that generated that signal. I was now learning from this trading signal. Oh, so, okay. so I sent him, see my results, see what people are saying. That was when he said, I should, can, I, can I, is it possible for me to start writing about these trading signals? for the newspaper every week and that's why i started writing trading signals for the newspaper every week mm -hmm. and so by the end of that year the following year it, i one morning i just saw my email chief richard Logesi, he sent me an email thanking me for the signals i had been selling through success digest reporting that he made twenty two thousand dollars the for the previous month mm -hmm. from those signals and that was so cool. I sent it immediately to Dr. Jabba. So, you know, all this thing were just the excitement. The testimonies. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of people that, there are a lot of people that, are, that went into trading because they were reading Success Digest. Go on, if you go online or maybe on Facebook or so and just drop the fire which is Forex Trader and all that, a lot of people that will tell you, I, some of them I didn't train them, but they got inspiration because of the articles I was so writing. It was part of your journey as a, 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 a trainer and a coach. A, exa exactly. And it was because I lost. And so that inspired me to now go dig, dig out whatever it was. But see, I didn't get it all. Because I was, I, from all, all of this, I, I, I stopped only with, there are three key things that will make you succeed in trading. First is the system, which is the strategy I was talking about. Then is the money management. And the third one is discipline. Discipline. But I focused only on the first two. Which is um, strategies, strategies and, systems. and systems. And that was what I've lived with for many years. And so, which is why, We've, we, I've made, I've helped, because it got to a point I said, it's like people are complaining, but let me manage funds for them. And I told them, bring money for them, let me manage for you. And so I began the fund management thing, and the first set of people that came, within three weeks, we made over 145%. Wow. And then over time, the next, the subsequent months, while I was setting, I blew the accounts. More money came in, I blew the account. It got to a point that I'm like, it's like I had to send an email to Dr. Jabba say, telling him, sir, it's like I've not arrived. Mm -hmm. The following day, he called me to his office. And the first thing he said was, Ephraim, don't do that thing you're thinking of doing. What was I thinking of doing? I was thinking of running away or ending it. Mm. So, was, in, in forex trading, sometimes you make so much percentage on your account, and sometimes you run at a loss. Exactly. If, so, is there any way you can actually determine? Is there any specific measure in forex trading to know that okay this thing will blow out? Yes, the challenge uh, many traders face is the illusion that I I, I can never lose. Mm. It's an illusion. In trading, you work with you work with goals, you work with targets, and there are always two targets, and you will always be right. There's a take profit target. And there is a stop loss target. Take profit and stop, stop loss. loss. Yes. But incidentally and sadly, most traders, most of us, I have to bring myself in too. Most of us, we don't like losing. Nobody wants to. Uh, good. So, so we set the take profit only. Let it hit my take profit if mm. it goes in my favor. If it goes in my it goes against me, let me keep on watching it and see whether it will return. And most times, if that happens, it doesn't return. And so an account is blown. 
So that's where the discipline comes in. So this thing says, if your system says use stop loss, make sure you use it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there are strategies like a hedging strategy that you can use when the market is not trending. So a hedging strategy, you use it when the market is not trending. You may decide not to use stop loss. You only for so much. You have to work it out systematically. If you don't know it, you don't know it. But many hedge only when the market turns against them. So these are things. So it got to a point when I now realized, hey, uh, it's like, post. I post. I know that there's a need for unlearning. And then you and learn. relearning. So I have, have, I'm doing the unlearning and relearning. So unlearn whatever does not work. Unlearn what has been putting you in trouble. Unlearn whatever has been creating crisis for you. Many people, a lot of people have had heart attack because of forex. So, mm. Yeah. So unlearn what doesn't work and then begin to relearn the things that work. Because it, it, the statistics show that if 100 people go into trading in a, in a year, at the end of the year, 95% struggle, 5% succeed. If you want to increase the statistics a, a bit to the favorable side, you will say 5% make the most money, 10% uh, mm. live above average, the rest 80%. They don't have a lot. Yes. Wow. And the money they lose, because in trading, if somebody is making profit, somebody must be losing. Mm. That's the... There's, there's a whole lot about um, forex trading. So we need to go on a quick break and then we'll come back to discuss further about forex trading because I really have interest in it and it's such an interesting topic for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we need to go on a quick break for the commercials and then come back to discuss further with uh, Mr. Infanyi about forex trading. Guys, welcome back from the break. And I say I have on set with me, Infanyi, the forex trader coach and a trainer uh mr infanyi apart from forex trading can we get to meet you on a lighter note what do you do aside from forex trading your leisure time or is it just about trading and coaching all the time well my life is more like a triangular kind of life do forex business church and back home ah okay church home and, back home. and work. yes i'm interested in church i work with children and teenagers oh and i in, in the redeemed christian church of god we, there is you know we have regions okay. we have provinces so i am the in charge of the junior church sports oh, team okay. so i coordinate sports in the junior church of the of the 11 of the redeemed christian church of god so, so that's what you do during when, when, when you're not trading yeah when i'm not trading we are working, working on all of this i know that yes oh, okay so a quick one sir what are the challenges that you can actually mention as the forex trader and as a trainer you know that people who know me from afar think that if i never loses if i has lost more than i've won mm. yeah because uh, the um, well it's challenging it's bumpy the road but education is the solution so you can blow up a billion dollar account if mm. you are not disciplined that's why i talked about discipline which is the third leg Strategy, money management, and discipline. Strategy is 10%, money management is 20%, but discipline is 70%. And that was the aspect I neglected for several years. So you have to be disciplined as a trader. You must be disciplined, yes. So the challenge is plenty. Of course, Nigeria's challenge, power challenge, technology challenge, all those things are there already. But then coming to the market, discipline, ability to control your emotions, failure to do that is a big challenge on its own. Mm. Okay, so... And now, in order to, you didn't ask me about the solution, but then let me quickly chip yes, it in. Yes. Education, education is the key. All right. I myself, so I now make education to be an everyday thing. Every day I learn, every day I learn, every day I learn. And right now, I'm even partnering with some academy, UK Trading Academy. It's in the UK. They have an office, a, even a classroom in Wales. So if you are a, a student, whenever you choose, if you, are in the, if you are in Wales, you can quickly, you know, chat them. I want to come to the office and they give you a three-day training. And the training there is not even about the chats. It's about your psychology, your mindset. Mm -hmm. And interesting thing too is the tuition you pay, you get it back at the end of the year. Because every week, between one, two, three percent per week, you can still get back. You know, because any money you pay for the for your tuition, you are learning, and it's an access for one year. You are learning, but also the money is also in trading for you. So at the end of the day, 
you are making some profit out of it so that you won't be under pressure to go and mm. be looking for money to blow. So you can easily, they say, demonstrate for two months. Demonstrate for two months because the fee you have paid will also be bringing back returns for you. And if you choose to compound it, it can even push you up to up to 400% in a, in a okay, year. Okay, um, Mr. Infine, there's this misconception about forex trading in Nigeria that people feel, ah, I cannot invest my money in forex trading. It's, it's scam, it's this, it's that. What do you have to say about that? Of course, there is no, anywhere you talk about scam or fake, know that there's an original. Mm. Yeah. So, if you are in the wrong place, of course, it can become a scam. But what we have today is scam is not even the problem. The problem the scam people are experiencing is, is lack of education. Somebody doesn't want to learn to do it, right? You want to give money to somebody that you are not even you have not even tested to do it for you. Ability. Yeah, and then you give the person money to trade for you, and the person loses it. Next thing you drag what is for to, there's a fellow, I won't call his name. Many years ago, they paid five thousand dollars into a trading account for him to manage. They didn't give him the cash. He lost it. And then he they called police on him. It's then that I invited him to one of our, our conferences then. So because I invited him, so they, when they went to the office, they called me. And so they gave them, they gave, gave them my number. So when they called, I told them to calm down. So when I called the guy, he told me what happened. Of course, nobody does not lose. If you, are, if you see, meet any trader and say, I've never lost, I'll never lose, be on the run. Mm. Be on the run. We lose every day and we make one every day. So wrapping up the show, what mm -hmm. advice do you have to give to people that want to invest in forex trading if you want to invest in forex whether you don't want to trade yourself or you want to just invest for somebody to trade for you the first thing is education because if you want to invest in any business and you are not educated about any industry any field at any niche at all if you are not educated about what goes on in there you will not know when they are guiding you or not it was like something that happened to a particular fellow several years ago he gave someone the money to manage an account to manage now the account because you need to understand balance, equity, and margin. Mm. The equity was down, dropping. The balance was increasing. So the people were busy paying the trader for the increased, increased balance. Meanwhile, the equity was dropping. I don't know if you understand that. You gave me 1,000, right? Mm. And I'm managing the 1,000. Then I'll make 200 profits. I'll add it. It's 1,000 too. But the equity is already at $200. Eventually, he lost the account, but these people have paid him for profit they thought he had made. Education is critical. Whether you are an investor, you want to just put money to invest, because even these days there's forest copy, and if you don't know how forest copy works, you can copy the wrong trader also. So you need education. Get it at least, if or not, get the education. education and that's yeah, get the education first. And that's why we even have that offer that you put your money into education, you can get any educational package, and weekly you get daily reward. On that education package that at the end of the year it's like you didn't even pay anything but you have gained education for free so get education first that education is what will set you apart any investor that does not invest in education is gambling mm. so that's so where education is very that's, the, that, that's the bedrock but sadly people will tell you ah all these trainers all these all these uh, trainers they are not uh, trading hello without trainers without educators how would you learn thank you so much mr infine it's um, an interesting session actually with you. And um, wrapping up the show, you already mentioned education, training. As a, tra as a trainer, forex trainer, aside from trading, you also train people. Have you been able to come up with any specific system for, your, for people that you actually train? Like I just mentioned about uh, the trading academy. Yeah. Okay. The, the trading academy gives you access to three winning strategies. Okay. And these strategies, in fact, there's one that's uh, called a sham rejection strategy. This strategy has outperformed, when you backtest it, it's outperformed the top hedge funds in, 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 in the world in the last 20 years, where you do backtesting. And then there's, of course, access to the, uh, the uh, a Newton Index, which is a, uh, an index that institutional traders use to know when the big banks want to make a move. All right, so that's the access you get in there. Of course, the Fibonacci strategy, that one, I've, uh, some of those who follow me have been using that to analyze and drop signals once in a while for them to see what's in the, of course, the, uh, the Fibonacci strategy is something that the risk-reward ratio is like, the risk, one, if the risk is one, the, the reward is two. All right, so is there at least three winning strategies anybody can assess 
going along with us. So your learning. training academy is open to anybody. Anybody can can enroll. Can yes. people enroll virtually or of course it, virtually? I, I don't even like doing the physical stuff again. So oh, okay. it, because it, uh, over the over the years, it's been I've been creating courses. So you you assess it. Just pay and you join there and you see what's happening. Then you join other traders from around the world and of course you learn also from the experiences of others. My last question before we wrap up this show. Have you been able to leverage on social media or technology in forex trading? Of course, I remember years back, which we have reinvented in any case, okay. we used to have um, a trading room where we all used to meet online. So everybody, so that's why, where I met a lot of other traders oh, from around okay. the world. We interact, oh, I'm, on, I'm long on this, I'm short on this, and other. So social media has been very helpful. Of course, you have to, the, when Facebook used to allow to create a room, more oh, like okay. it. So we used to have, Facebook. yes, we used to have that in those days and all that. And then, of course, you have your groups. So all those things are there. But these days, Telegram is there. WhatsApp, WhatsApp is there. Too. For most of the stuff now, I upload on YouTube. I put on my Telegram. I put on my WhatsApp. Follow it. And then we, we do all the Wow, that's interesting. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Infine. It's very nice to have you on the show. Thank you for honoring our invitation. I'm very glad I you have you <laughs> today. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for you, having sir. me. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank it's you. a wrap today on the TOD show with Infai Uche, the Forex trader and trainer in Nigeria. Thanks for watching the TOD show. Join me next time on the same channel. Thank you.